Oh, ugly chart. Ugly, ugly fucking chart. Still 15 forward PE, 3.4% dividend. Yeah, their earnings are next week. Today you learned nose rinse feels exactly like you get water in your nose when in the pool in the sea. Well, it sounds like it, right? Um, did I already talk about Michael Burry's bet against NASDAQ and S&P? I've been mentioning it for a while now. People were badly misunderstanding it. Um, just so you know, the notional value of his quote short position was like 1.8 billion. People were interpreting it as though he was putting up $1.8 billion in premium. I've seen people estimate that the premium he paid was at the low side. I've seen 10 million, the high side, 40 million. When you consider what the rest of his portfolio looked like, it actually looked like it was insurance, i.e. he's just trying to cover downside the vast majority of his book is long shares positions. Heard you, not recommending it. Never tried waterboarding. Hey, if you ever come to America, let me know. I will be happy to waterboard you because I love you. Piggybacking off people misunderstanding, sometimes deliberately. You can't stand Twitter accounts that misrepresent news to be doomer. I agree. I agree. I agree. It's what I fucking can't stand. Like, what I will tell you is that there is a group of people, ATI is in, this is a steel company. Um, I can't stand the fact that we award people based on their ability to get people outraged or to scare the shit out of people instead of providing actual like real context. Are people getting paid from Twitter now? Absolutely. Is it being needlessly obtuse the entire point of social media these days? You would think so. Uh, Jay Jared, not only that, but you don't think the 13F would show net exposure, so it could also be a spread? Could be. I haven't heard that argument though. That's an interesting one. Venom is, you had to block Wall Street Silver. There is an actual really good thread that actually describes who Wall Street Silver is, and it is hilarious. I mean, not if you're a fan of him. It's infuriating. That basically, he took over that entire subreddit, and he was selling access to its members um, to different, like, junior gold and silver miners. Like, shit goes. So, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing, by the way, with, like, Zero Hedge. Where I love the topics they approach. I hate their angle. Like, they're just farming outrage. Can I link the thread? Sure thing. Hold on. It's from... Is it? What was a thread about it? Yeah, his name's Jim Lewis. Is this a thread? There was a long Twitter thread specifically. But the guy's name is Jim Lewis. I love how if you're a doomer enough of an account, people find out your real name. Like Frank Wilson, i.e. Wifey Alpha. Um, what's his name? Alex Laf Laf La Lafrange or Laforge, um, who's the Car Carlo Cassio cat. 
Like, if you piss off enough people, they find out your name. <laughs> uh, people love snake oil. Agreed. Agreed. If, if you tell people the market's going to crash, then they need to listen to you because you can help guide them through it. If you just told people, you know what? No one knows what's going on. 90% 90, 90 of the time, society adapts. Economies adapt. The market tends to start at the bottom left of a chart, tends to move to the upper right. Just buy index funds and ignore people like me. It doesn't make us money, right? No. Particularly if you want to appeal to people who feel aggrieved. You're like, oh, look at this. You know, and you can point to all sorts of cherry pick stories where it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a load of bullshit. RFK Jr.'s conference call on censorship has been censored by YouTube. Oh, too bad. RFK should run as a Republican. That's where he spends all of his time fundraising anyway. Go ahead, RFK. You should run. Let's hear what you sound like on the Republican stage, right? By the way, how is silver as an asset class doing? Let's see. P silver, because it's the physical silver, not that paper shit. Right? Look at him. Kind of following a trend here. Yeah, most Democrats from the 60s and 70s are now Republicans. To be fair, I mean, most people as they go on their life gets more, gets more, quote, conservative. Then admits, is there a decent chance of RFK getting Democrat nomination or not really? Not really. Not really. Put it this way. When is the last time you've had an incumbent run for office and not, or rather an incumbent, then run for re-election and not, quote, win their primary? I literally cannot remember a time it's happened. You love my quote about Kennedy brains always gets you. That one had you crying laughing. I assume everyone knows that comment. I'll be happy to share if not. It's, it's one of the more wrong things I say. I will tell you right now. It's one of the most wrong statements you'll ever hear me make. But it's true. Venkat, among Air, Sem Air, On, or Qualcomm, which one has a good entry point to the drubbing? Almost certainly Qualcomm, all of them though. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to hold back still on Air and on Semi. I may be making a mistake. I'm holding back for a second. Jay Corbett, do I really think Biden is fit to run for president again? I wish he wouldn't. I wish he wouldn't. I have that weird belief that with the exception of his China policy, Biden has been a very effective president, but I don't want him to run again. He's a gaffe machine. Um, I, I hate his China policy in particular. And quite frankly, I, I'm sick of seeing, I don't want to see an election decision between a 78 year old and an 81 year old. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and Hookie, I love that comment. Yeah. Yeah, for those of you that do not know, for those of you that do not know, my comment about Kennedy is the best Kennedy brains was deposited on Jackie's dress in Dallas. To all the people who say RF Kennedy's a smart dude. No, he's fucking not. He is a grifter. The man makes over $250,000 a year through his foundation selling you fear about vaccines. That's it. That's it. He makes more money shitting on vaccines than Pfizer executives make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. Uh, he was not fit during his campaign. You notice his dementia before the news found out. I don't know about that. Vivek's a very smart dude, but unfortunately he's not smart enough to realize some of the statements he's making is fucking stupid. By the way, the only thing political I will say right now before I dramatically change the topic. Remember, we'll talk politics next week. There'll be some special streams in the evening time, particularly before the Republican debate. We're absolutely watching it. We're drinking the whole fucking time. 
We'll have a good old time. If the election is Trump versus Biden, Biden will win. If the election is Biden versus anybody else, I think Biden's in danger. I think Biden's in danger. The only person I feel comfortable Biden could actually beat is Trump. It's true. Do I like Vivek Ramaswamy? No. I like Tim Scott better. I like Tim Scott better. I like Nikki Haley better. The best people are quite, the ones I really wanted aren't running. <laughs> Jeb Bush with the steel chair. Jeb wasn't that bad. Is Ramswamy the woke ink? <laughs> Kinda. See, dude, you're actually disappointed in Biden running again. He should handpick someone else. He shouldn't handpick anybody, but he should not run. He should not run. The Democrat uh, bench is actually pretty broad right now. Uh, I don't think uh, Buttigieg is ready, but you got the Castro brothers. You have Gavin Newsom, who I'm not a big fan of on a personal level, but Gavin Newsom's interesting. Gretchen Whitmer from uh, Michigan is another interesting one. The person I wish would run and do well, the two people I wish, by the way, are both Republicans. Larry Hogan from Maryland and Baker from uh, Massachusetts. The U.S. would be better off with both of them. Jamie Dimon, I think, would have been an interesting one. I don't even mind Nikki Haley. AOC, fuck no. Fuck no. AT361, you just paid $4.45 for gas. The fuck's going on? Where do you live? You want Diamond? Diamond would be interesting. McCain had some interesting views, but he had some integrity. You got to understand, like, you're a Miami got you. Florida, ha yeah. Florida has their own weird thing right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, Florida's got their own fucking problems going on right now. And I'm going to be honest. Part of that's your fucking governor being a dipshit. Oof. He has fucked up the business climate down there. Mo, you want Katie Porter one day? She's an interesting one. She's an interesting one. I think Nikki Haley would be the first female president, by the way. I don't I I've always said I think the first woman president will probably be a Republican. I've said that for over a decade now. You want Baker's lost all the Trumpers? He couldn't win a primary. That's the issue. That's the issue. AP361, you'll take hurricanes every any day or before earthquakes and tornadoes. Really? Really, AT361? Really? AT361, in my office. Let's chat. My brother in Christ, you do know earth <laughs> hurricanes do bring tornadoes with them, first of all. But no, that's an interesting viewpoint, guys, because we're going to move off of politics for, for right now. All right, we are. And it comes down to what natural disaster would you want bearing down on you? Right? And Hooky makes a good point here. To be fair, you can see a hurricane coming for days. That's a true statement. You've been through dozens. When was the last one that actually hit Miami, though? Was it Andrew? Because I, I have a bunch, like, I'm half Cuban. I have a bunch of relatives in Miami. Bunch of relatives in Miami. And I know um, Andrew was the one that fucked them all up. But I spent almost a, my first decade of life living in California. I've been in quite a few earthquakes, barely even noticed them. I would say tornadoes. I would say tornadoes. That's the one you'd prefer to be around. Hurricanes, easier to handle than earthquakes. I think I can get that one because generally speaking, you don't get caught off guard by a, by a hurricane, right? Miami got partially hit back. Okay. Andrew fucked him up. Andrew was the bad one. Jay likes to get edged. Shut up. <laughs> California scared of hurricanes because you've never seen one before. You guys have. You've had them before. They're just not common. 
tsunamis. That's a terrifying one. Irma. Okay, that's right. 2017, Irma got you guys. Yeah, Andrew was the one that fucked y'all up, though. Earthquakes don't last long. Um, go to Seattle and keep that same viewpoint. When they get theirs, theirs is going to last a while. Yeah. That's the difference between a strike slip fault and a mega thrust fault. Rad. California isn't designed for that much rain is the issue. LA doesn't drain. If anybody could use a bath, it's LA. Give me a volcanic or you are fucking high. Tsunamis are my are, are my fear, my my terrifying one. But yeah, I will tell you guys right now, tornado. Tornado. All right. Tornado. I'm Steve says what? Two minutes instead of one minute? Oh. Oh. Hold on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh boy. I'm Steve. Mega thrust earthquake, the one that hit Indonesia. The Indian Ocean tsunami was eight to ten minutes long. Mm-hmm. Eight to ten minutes of shaking. Now, granted, the Juan de Fuca fault rupturing, it's probably not eight to ten minutes. I've seen it estimated at close to five minutes, though. If the full thing goes. Yeah. Mega thrusts are different, guys. Mega. If you're from California, good news. This is not you. This is Seattle. This is Vancouver. This is Oregon. <laughs> yeah, Steve, good news. You come here for stock and market talk, but you also stick around to get terrified. Yes. Since you know that's longer than you. No comment. Random blather, tornado suck. You went through a big one. Um, I almost got hit by one in Indiana once. This is Portland. You're fucked. Um, what side of I-5 are you on? <laughs> if the answer is the West, yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> and Mitaska, you've been to the spot where they have the Buddha statue close to Colombo. That's Sri Lanka. It's very sober. You read the tip of the statues where the tsunami height reached. Ooh. Spence, you want to talk about the bird flu? <laughs> Weird mobiles. Micron should build a factory in the Pacific Northwest. Their headquarters is Idaho. Yeah. 404 server not found. You're in Seattle. You're on the east side of I-5. You're probably safe. Zirconium. Isn't Seattle safe from the tsunami? No. Not any of the parts near the water. <laughs> because when it inundates in, it may not be on the direct coast, but in the bay side it will push water levels up. It'd be a different level of fucked. But yeah, earthquake is the main issue. It's the outlying parts west of Seattle. So they get splashed. They get a little wet. They get a little bit wet. And okay, you're waiting for a big earthquake near Charleston, South Carolina. Does that happen? I know the uh, Mississippi River Valley used to have earthquakes. Sucking in all those I-5 exhaust fumes. Yeah. You get asteroid be the worst because you don't get, you get a month, you get a month wa long warning, but couldn't do anything but wait to die. Probably. Won't the peninsula take the brunt of the actual tsunami, right? Seattle just gets flooded. Possibly, but it's, it's, it's still bad. The main issue, and I think 404 server not found points it out. When Seattle was first built, no one thought they had earthquakes. The last time the fucking earthquake happened was 1700. All right. By the time they started building, California has been rebuilt numerous times because they have earthquakes relatively often. So they learned. Seattle didn't learn until about, what, 20 to 25 years ago. Oh, shit. That's a mega thrust. Oh, fuck. They didn't even know. Yeah, Vancouver, that's what we're talking about. They call it the Cascadia Mega Thrust Fault. Cascadia. So Cascadia Subduction Zone. All right. 
If y'all want to get scared, here you go. Today's episode of Fear. All right. All right. It's worse than California. It is so much scarier than California. The largest earthquakes the United States will ever receive are in two parts of the country. Pacific Northwest and Alaska. California is not capable of producing an earthquake the size that's possible. It has everything to do with geology. It's the difference between when two plates are going at each other, pushing one down, versus going side by side. California, they're going side by side. Pacific Northwest, they're going at each other. Mega thrust and subduction, oh, they do. By the way, Spy is secretly fucking right now. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. Don't don't make it nervous. Just watch. Zirconium. The thought, though, too, is that there's a long series of smaller earthquakes, though. It doesn't have to come all at once, but we haven't... Are you talking about Cascadia? Because I have literally heard the exact opposite, which is Seattle has... Or Pacific Northwest has not seen rapid earthquake activity with exceptions of their volcanoes. Keep that in mind. They haven't seen actual subduction activity or te tectonic related earthquakes pretty much ever in recorded history. Yet they found out that big ones existed. Ziptron, why don't the Rocky Mountains have an earthquake risk? No fault. No fault. There's no fault line. Yeah. We do know the answer to that. There's no fault line. Generally speaking... Geology is complex, guys. Generally speaking, earthquakes happen where plates intersect. And instead, what you see from the Rocky Mountains, my understanding is they're well inland of where two plates went. So they buckled, but that's not where the fault is. I think. Don't hold me to that. Old, old mountains, yep. Actually, that is a really interesting question, though, because usually large mountain ranges like that are at boundaries. Why is the Rocky Mountains like where they are? Mo says, honestly, we should have disaster movie stream nights. You vote for 2012 first. That was not a bad one. It was wild, but like. Yeah. The one I liked was Day After Tomorrow. Glup Shitto, kind of related. It's not kind of related. It's related. The engineering behind tuned mass dampers and skyscrapers is super interesting. 100% true. I agree. The plates shifted over, right? The fault lines used to be where the range is. But the plates are the fault lines. Thick Slim. All right. The faults in the Rocky Mountains are ancient and inactive. Smashed together when the Laramide origin occur. Okay. And hooky, which is why um, being near mountain ranges can indicate near a fault line. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because like, for example, like Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, we know why those exist as active volcanoes. And it's absolutely due to the presence of the fault line. If you have a subduction zone, I actually learned this. All right, let's chat. This is fun. Then we'll get to the market. If you have a subduction zone where part of the plate is going underneath the other, all right, all that plate that's going under has a lot of water. It's wet. It comes from the ocean all the time. So then as it goes under, say, 30, 40, 50 miles, the water content, the waterlogged earth, when it gets to the hotter parts of the planet's crust, causes it to bubble up and get even hotter. So as a result, it rises up to the top. And that's why you have the entire Aleutian mountain chain. That's why you have the vast majority of Indonesia. That's why you have um, the volcanoes in South America, like Chile. And that's why you have uh, the mountains up in the Pacific Northwest. Wet all the time, you say. <laughs> The earth is so interesting, very much. Very much.
Pacific, uh, sorry, not Pacific Northwest. Palo Alto. Look at Palo Alto. It's trying to do a little bit gangster. No one, no, like, I am, I am against the idea that they are specifically reporting an earnings miss. This is so much bigger. I'm not saying it's positive, but I am saying I don't think what they're doing is a negative or is, is specifically we missed earnings. This is why we moved earnings. We could have pre-announced we didn't. Instead, we moved our earnings to a Friday, made it a two-hour phone call, opened up our IR people to speak to analysts now. Less than five minutes. Today has flown. By the way, I have no clue what time they're reporting. You got one funzy Palo Alto call. Ballsy, my friend. Ballsy, ballsy, ballsy. I respect it. People talking about a new COVID variant causing concern among scientists. To be fair, what makes scientists concerned about COVID strains is how different it looks from the prior strain. It doesn't say anything about being more dangerous. It's just how different it is. Because if it's different, then theoretically, um, if you've had it before, etc., you can still get it again. I've been tracking this shit. Yeah. The days of COVID being particularly dangerous from a public health standpoint ended when Omicron emerged. Omicron was the vaccine. Delta was terrifying. As you're you've had a lot of people around you get COVID. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like a cold. Remember, uh, what is it? 30 to 35% of people who get the, uh, like get a cold the cold virus is OC43. OC43 is a coronavirus. There's actually a belief that this started the Russian 1889 flu, was actually a coronavirus jumping to the human population. It killed millions of people worldwide back in 1889. Anyway. Um, wasn't it more contagious? It almost certainly is. That's that's how, like, evolution works, right? You know, it keeps evolving to find its way into new and new people. Yeah, but every time it does that, generally, the expectation is it gets weaker. Notice how I say the words generally and the expectation. I, I remember a lot of people talking about how, like, oh, well, new variants are automatically less dangerous. No. The 1918 flu, influenza, the second wave was most deadly. COVID, the Delta wave was most deadly. Per case, it was most deadly. It's true. Yeah. It's just a bug. It's a seasonal virus now, except it doesn't have a season. It just hits. JJ, don't viruses in general want to coexist with the host and not kill it? Mm. They don't have a brain. That's the problem. That's the problem. Like, there's really, really interesting reading you can do on the topic of like, like particularly like uh, the, the history of pandemics. But yeah, um, we've now like the two biggest examples that we've been able to kind of see it's 1918 and um, this one. And basically it was never the first, but it was like a second or third variant that ended up becoming the most dangerous. 
then eventually a much more mutated version comes along. So that's why we called uh, Omicron. Omicron was the vaccine. And you can go back, by the way, and understand why, J. Jared. It's really interesting. Where did Omicron get discovered? It was like an outpatient clinic in Africa um, where a bunch of kids were complaining of just seasonal cold symptoms. Where was Delta discovered? Emergency rooms in India. So, yeah. It's weird when you ask what a virus wants. Oh, consent is so sexy with viruses. Yeah. Anyway. I'm Steve Ask When's the Palo Alto event? People are saying 405. Consent is always sexy. Viruses love their consent. How Chinese stocks do today? I don't know. Let's see how Yin did. Looks like shitty. Yeah, an organism wants to live. It's in its DNA. We're not asking, we're assuming. Technically, organisms want to procreate, not live. It's a weird distinction, I know. Does he have examples of organisms that the act of um, reproduction essentially kills them? Um, if we end right here, it looks like the bears are going to win. We're five cents away. Eight cents away. We're right at that level. Isn't procreating living? Again, there are examples of species that their act of uh, procreation literally kills them. Time. Bulls win. You have to be living, yeah, but it's not like they procreate to live. Like the act of actually giving birth kills them. Um, I say that because there are spiders that literally have the eggs inside them. The act of giving birth is the babies rupture out of them and eat them. Good job. Good job, bulls. You win. You have won. It doesn't feel like that. We have ended flat. Oh, a lot of bears in here today. Oh, boy. It was close. It was close. If a robot can cre recreate itself, is it alive? I assume the answer is no. Keep in mind, people don't say viruses are alive. All right, keep eyes on Palo Alto. We want to see how they do. I am anticipating their news is they are getting out of software. All right. I'm assuming there's no big acquisition news. Right? But let's keep eyes on it. I'm not going to stick around for their phone call. If people are thinking they're going to miss, I don't know. I'll never trust their management again, though, if they don't report anything big. Regenerator hardware, yes. Palo Alto sells both hardware and software. Their software business is growing much faster than their hardware business. That's why people care. Sorry, getting out of hardware. Yeah, I think they're getting out of hardware. I think they want it to be known in the future as software, software, software. Yeah, I meant to say getting out of hardware. Correct. If they're getting out of hardware, are they selling their hardware division? Who's the buyer? I'm checking movement on TD Ameritrade as it's more responsive. Captain Z Sola, only 10% of your long-term portfolio is at stake. Best of luck, sir. Palo Alto earnings, correct. We're keeping our eye on it. That guy that offered to buy X, he's very pro-union guy. Some of the S-Mark guy? Mid-touch, you got puts? Ballsy, my friend. Ballsy, ballsy, ballsy. It could totally go down. I mean, not 
not a lot of good examples of companies moving earnings to Friday afternoon. What I will say is the idea that they moved earnings to Friday because they're bad, I don't agree with. I don't think that feels like management mis uh, malpractice, let's just say. <laughs> Less than two minutes to go. By the way, if you hold positions in Palo Alto, like, I feel like buying or selling today is crazy. Well, specifically, like, after whatever they report. Unless it's unambiguously good or bad, they've got all weekend to, like, massage it, to get it to the analysts, etc. Palo Alto founder leaving? I don't First of all, is the current CEO the founder? My understanding is the current... CEO, I don't think he's the founder. I think he's a CEO. Uh, I think he came in from Google. He was the previous Google exec. But I could be wrong. You can correct me. Your, your company office is right next to Palo Alto. Ooh, interesting. I bet it's a beautiful office, yeah. Less than one minute to go, folks. By the way, watch the stock not move because they're going to make some announcement like we're getting out of hardware and no one knows how to react. Remember, 25% of their revenue comes off of hardware, but it's a slower growing business. So if you believe in logic behind uh, forward PE and valuation, on one end, they're getting rid of something that provides them absolute value. On the other end, they are now faster uh, growing. Palo Alto drops, Palo Alto bounces. It's all over the place. I've literally got it all over the place. Now, oh, whoa. Now, okay, still bouncing. I've got it now at 217, 219, 220. It could drop down again. It's, it's literally, but now it's up. All right. Someone, give me the news. I'm assuming they did not miss. All right, expectations look like for Q4. Hold on, that's, I don't know if that was there. Palo Alto EPS beat, they're up big. Palo Alto beat. Sales, so on the revenue side, slight miss. That's fine. They still grew revenue. They grew EPS big time. This, by the way, is one of the first times they are expected to be like gap earnings positive, at least in a significant fashion. Palo Alto is one of them growth software companies that's now turning into a uh, uh, money generating. Now, what's the real reason they move their earnings? Uh, sees next uh, 2024 revenue slightly down over expectations, by the way. But again, I don't think that's why they moved. Where is the real news? Where's the real news? Uh, Palo Alto is now trading at $221 a share. They're up sizably. Where's the news? There's got to be something bigger. Black Raven's link was earnings. Got it. So that's the expectations. Palo Alto's up big though right now.
This is pretty solid. For the fiscal first quarter, we expect total billings in the range of 2.05 to 2.08, representing year-over-year -year growth between 17 and 19%. Total revenue, got it. Non-gap. That is what our good friend Prometheum would call out as operating leverage when they're growing revenue between 17 to 19%, but they're growing EPS between 39 to 41%. I'm assuming there's some reason. This does not explain why they move their earnings. Needs to recue the drive. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Guys, put it this way. Palo Alto is not a shit cow. It's in a competitive sector. It's expensive. No doubts there. I've not heard anyone describe him as a shit cow, though. Whoever it was that said they had 10% of their port in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. Regenerator, I'm with you. I'm waiting. There's there's something else here. There's something else here. By the way, dollar forty four per share against a dollar twenty eight. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Palo Alto is now at two twenty four. Promo, you're surprised the guy down isn't being seen as negative. Yeah, for the full year. Because it looks like they specifically guided revenue. I don't know what they did on the EPS side. But it looks like their profitability has increased. So it almost feels like, Promo, this is something you and I were talking about previously. How for so long, like last year, everyone kept talking shit about all these growth companies and saying, what about profitability? What about profitability? What about profitability? So now the companies are like, fine, fuck it. We'll give a shit about profitability. So they're growing earnings and income over revenue. And now people are like, but you're not growing your revenue that much. How much did Fortinet guide down? I forget. Theirs was more significant. I know that much. I know Fortinet's was. Necessary shallot. I can only assume they are now buying X. They're doubling down on hard hardware. Uh, Palo Alto is at 226. Devil Horse. Didn't they say usual date simply conflicted with something else? Maybe they didn't lie. Mm -hmm. you know, what's a good valuation promo? For a company with disgusting margins, okay, it's a software business. It's a software business. It's got disgusting margins and now transitions to profitability. Like, so we can use PE valuation and we're like, okay, they're going to grow revenue between 15 to 20% now moving forward. If that's the expectations, like what's a good valuation? What's a good fair one? It's not like they're giving you money back now. Yeah, Mo's pointing out their fiscal year 2024 EPS guide is $5.27 to $5.40. Estimate was $4.98. This is a substantially more profitable company. Pardon your serial killer typing. No. Maybe low, mid 30s. All right. MP Tosca, I like this comment. Someone else mentioned earlier about like, um, for example, NVIDIA. And even in a quote, hard landing, NVIDIA feels relatively safe. Yes, they're on a different cycle. By the way, if the economy explodes and for the next three years, we get steady growth, NVIDIA is going to have its own cycle. At some point... People will pull back on purchasing AI accelerators aside from just replacing the ones they've already bought that burned out. And therefore, you'd see a digestion period. But if the economy goes into recession immediately, people can stop buying graphics cards. Companies are still investing in AI because they think it's going to save them money. Here's the ER slides. Yeah, I've got Palo Alto at 226. Medium term update. Nikesh. So this year for the full year. Hold on. No, that's Q4. My God. Operating margin. Non-gap, of course. Fuck, can you give me a gap number? Of course not. 
Yeah, non-GAAP number, 28.4%. That's not bad. This company two years ago was probably negative. Yeah, they're fucking right now, guys. They're at 226. Total billings is plus 18% year over year. Remaining performance obligations are up 30%. Their bill to book is good. Their bill to book is good. Can they not put all their numbers in red? Orange. But I get your point. God damn. Year over year... Their NGS business, I don't know what the fuck that is though, uh, was plus 56% year over year on their annual recurring revenue. That's huge. Disney suing Florida for damages. Oh, I get to read all about that this weekend. Slides 12 and 16, okay. Yep, successful execution through a tough macro. So platformization, go to market transformation, strong product innovation, driving efficiency and leverage. Cool, here's the slide 16. Industry hardware growth trend is returning to expected baseline. Back to normal. Next gen, so NGS is next gen. Secure. Thank you, Conjurer. I appreciate it. First time chat, so thank you. Guys, as much as we like seeing after our movement, I still assume this is all a nothing burger till next week. Promo says, so Fortinet got killed on going from 30% growth to 11% by year end. What is Palo Alto guiding to now? Let me see if I can find the guidance specifically. Yep, so their guidance for next year is revenue. They are moving from plus 25% a year to 18 to 19% a year. Um, operating margin improves EPS. They're basically looking at a 19 to 22% year over year. So it looks like their earnings are outpacing their revenue growth, right? Interesting, but a sad read will be Maui land and pineapple. Ooh, second quarter results. Only read a few paragraphs. Good call out. Uh, AT361, it does reset after a certain amount of time. My apologies. But yeah, you 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 tipped me 51 bucks. Um, no pressure, guys, but usually steel cold kegs, yeah, because he, he comes in every so often and he's given me 100 before, he's given me 50, and I just appreciate it, just saying. Regenerator, I'm with you. Where the fuck's the real news? There's gotta be something here. Could slide 10 be the surprise? Can't be, no. Single vendor, S-A-S-E. And if someone can tell, what the fuck does S-A-S-E mean? Who had the big sell-off? It's so cringe, breaking news. I agree. I agree 100%. Hold on. This is covering something. This might be it, actually. Tomek, self-addressed stamp M fucker. Covering the slide before. Marquee deals in Q4. A four, this is in Q4. So this is the quarter that just happened. Secure access service edge. Thank you, Midas Touch. Yeah. 
could be their AI on their SD. Okay. I know why WAN's wide area network. I know that much. Yeah, by the way, next quarter, they're guiding up, at least in EPS. I think revenue might be a slight guide down. It looks like not a big deal, obviously, with how it's being treated. No names of companies, they'll not reveal. Very, very unlikely they'll reveal. Software defined, thank you. Software defined, SD, software defined. So what you can see, Palo Alto is growing 20%. When you say growing, though, in this case, promo, are you talking revenue or EPS? I assume usually we talk about revenue. Is there a fair piece of commentary about their new and improved pro, uh, um, profitability? Mr. Googly Eyes, they're just waiting to release the big news so the insider... I, they can't. Take care, Necessary Charlotte. Yeah, but right now from a valuation standpoint, they are presume on the low end, give them 530. Okay, $5.30 for the next 12 months in EPS. Right? So I'll give them, say, 225. That's about 42. Yep. 42 forward PE. Guys, this is exciting for Palo Alto. You don't understand. This is the first time we get to evaluate this company on PE, believe it or not. Take care, Steel Coke Eggs. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, look at promo. Look at this EPS in the bottom corner. I mean, this is like watching, it's like watching an actual profitable company emerge from the doldrums of shitco, hyper growth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> They'll just sell it on a Palo Alto network secured offshore drive. <laughs> Purdue, I'm with you. Why is this a Friday news? There's got to be something more. By the way, 229. 229. This fucker is going to fill a gap, guys. Yeah, no longer a <laughs> Right? Easier to plan company parties. You guys are fucking nuts. <laughs> Bless your hearts. Taluja, your take on Friday news, they flew in peeps for the sales summit. You know what? It's, I, I can't disagree with you. I can't. If it happened earlier, that to pay more for more. We got served a nothing burger. I'm not going to say a nothing burger. Their results look really good. Their results, particularly when you put them next to Fortinet, right? Their earnings look good. But like, yeah, I mean, there is someone on Wall Street bet talking about shorting them. Let's see how he's doing. He was because they were reporting earnings on a Friday. Let me see if the people are dogging him. I want to see if he's getting torn the fuck up. See, dog, you fucked up. What'd you do?
You realize you had a 2.30 expiring today? Oh, dear God, my sir. I'm so sorry. That's not good. I'll find the Palo Alto person. Oh, I didn't delete it. No way. And Mr. Googly Eyes, you just had a call with a <laughs> portfolio manager of a fund that literally works by himself, no one else, and just buys stocks that have 15% or greater earnings beats, does no due diligence, and doesn't care what the company does. He manages $1 billion in cap. How the fuck do I get that gig? Uh, 100% yes. Yeah, apparently you get to get, yeah, you need to <laughs> convince people. I guarantee you that person's number one job is marketing, marketing and sales. That is, that is hilarious though. My investment strategy is I look at the headlines and I see who beat earnings. Imagine if Mullen squeezed. Yeah, their executives would sell every fucking share they have their hands on. Hey, Perchu, and whoever has us all drinking, uh, all drink more water. It's Sick Chief. Yeah. You've been at it, making you proud. Yeah, everyone hydrate in honor of Sick Chief. Listen, you guys, when he said he did no due diligence, you actually laughed out loud. You're still waiting for the AMC squeeze. Oh. Promo, no. I have to read this weekend. F's in the chat for CDAW, dude. No F's. Give them dumpsters. Give them dumpsters in chat. Dumpsters in chat. One of the branches of the company you work for manages a fund. Let me tell you, the whole fund managers are fucking stupid. It's all literally just rich idiots throwing money at each other. Yeah, probably. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, guys, Friday nights are for gaming. So here's my Discord server. I am hoping we get together a crew to play some games tonight. I'm looking forward to it. My Discord's free. 100% free. Always is. Always will be. Seraphon's a great one. I'm so close to the call yet, yeah, but I have Hershey looking at me, so I must take care of my pup. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Twitch streams, I don't know what we're playing tonight. We've been recently doing a lot of Jackbox games. That's always been fun. I don't care about the conference call. Basically, guys, honestly, I prefer um, reading transcripts. I'm a transcript reader. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Let's check out what our good friend Jay Jared's up to. Oh, he's not streaming right now. 
All right. Well, I will see you all on Monday or the weekend.